All right, so it's been a while since I took this forklift apart and done a bunch of different things on it. Getting ready to put the wheels back on. So I guess we'll just take a look at what it takes to do the, the rear axles initially. We'll probably do a second video for the front axles just to keep the uh, length reasonable and topics uh, separated. So I've cleaned everything off with diesel initially and just uh, a wire brush. You'll probably need to do a bit more than that. I'm still going to clean it with uh, brake cleaner here. And then I'm going to reuse the bearings. You need to inspect them, inspect the face, the inside to see if they've been spinning a lot. Check the uh, rollers. So these rollers are imperfect. It's a bit of dirt, but uh, on the other side there's some rust on the rollers. But I've decided for the time being that that's okay. Then you can look on the inside and look at the uh, inner race as well. Do that for the uh, outer bearing as well. This one doesn't sound very good. And uh, what I didn't realize was that there's supposed to be preload on these bearings at all times. So this uh, washer is a wear point and the nut is also a wear point. When you can't get enough preload on the bearings you're supposed to replace these as a pair. And it's conceivable that's been done in the past. Then you'll need a, a cotter pin, a regular kit is not big enough, so I'm gonna have to go and buy some cotter pins to do this job. So I've got up to 5.30 seconds and that's not big enough. So uh, I guess I'll take this to the store, size it up and get some more cotter pins. I've got some uh, wheel bearing grease. I got the seals. Then a 46 millimeter socket, a three quarter inch drive. That's about how you're gonna have to buy it. So you'll probably need to get an adapter to set up your torque wrench on this thing to a half inch drive. So I found these instructions here in the manual and they're not very good. They didn't do the conversion correctly from metric to imperial. They got the decimals in the wrong places. But basically the lugs are 100 foot-pounds and then we'll have to do what these steps are. We'll get into that a bit further as I'm doing it. But just to uh, give you an idea what the job is, but it talks about doing a uh, preload on the bearings. So I've got some uh, multi-grit sandpaper here. 320 and 400 is what I used. I used that to clean the uh, hub's ceiling surface. So these were pretty rusted. The uh, You can sort of see where the uh, bearing or the uh, seal lip rides. You can see that the uh, bearing has been spinning on the spindle. These spindles are not very expensive. You can buy replacements if need be. And it's a good time to grease the machine when you have it apart and take a note on how the uh, grease fittings are set up. So the grease fittings are set to the back on this machine and also set to what would be like the passenger side of a vehicle. So. Uh, just to, to make it easier to grease. And uh, you do need to turn the wheels one way to reach one of the grease fittings on the uh, center pin. And that's probably the most neglected part of the forklift is that center pin. And this machine is absolutely destroyed. And also while I was trying to grease the pivot points for this uh, rear axle, I put a, a jack under it just to uh, move things around a bit. I don't know if you can see that movement when I jack it up. But I've got about an eighth of an inch of play on the uh, pivots. So the pivots are destroyed on this machine. And then the uh, center link is destroyed as well. All replaceable. I'll probably have to take the rear axle out and maybe get it to a machine shop so that they can make some shims perhaps depending on uh, how far gone it is but I can replace all those parts but I won't be doing that in this video so I just like I said I sanded off these spindles where the seals go and kind of inspected them they look good but they are replaceable the king pins seem good there's uh, seals on each end of the king pins when you grease it it may come out and the gap or it may come out at the seal depending on how it goes but uh, 
I had a trouble getting it to take grease. So normally when something won't take grease, you gotta change its position. So I was kind of rocking it back and forth like this. I got the rearest pivot to take grease by doing that. And then I put the jack on it to uh, grease the front one. And that's when I realized that it was damaged. So it's, uh, like I said, it's a good time to take a look at this. When you're actually replacing the axle, you probably wouldn't take the uh, spindles off per se for repairing the axle rather. Then it doesn't seem like any of the uh, ball joints or like tie rod ends have any grease fittings on them. They're all sealed components. So uh, yeah, it's a good time to take a look around here and understand the machine. When you got it up on blocks, I just have it on four by sixes. So just two on the counterweight there and two more on the counterweight there. Now if you haven't seen the video of me taking this apart, I will say that these are split rims. You need to take the air out of the wheels before you take the wheel off of the machine. And you don't put the air back in the tires until you have them bolted onto the machine and torqued down. Because they're a split rim and if these weren't tight, if there was something, a flaw in the wheel, you need to have this thing well bolted down so it doesn't kill you. So I just restate that again. So the next thing to do is I'll start to clean this up. I'm not going to show you how to pack bearings. There's a million videos on how to pack wheel bearings. So I'm just going to do my method and uh, move on and start putting this together. So we'll jump in here a little bit later. Already got one seal driven in, got the bearings all packed up. Took uh, probably half a container just to do the two rear wheel bearings, so you probably need two or more of these uh, little containers to pack the grease. I like the uh, grease, it's got like a translucent color to it. I don't like the grease that looks like it's all like kind of snotty and you can't see through it. It's a personal preference, I find that this is more high quality grease, in my opinion. So you can tap the seals in by hand, this with a hammer, but it becomes a bit tricky because they're kind of large, right? So I dragged out my uh, seal and bearing race driver and we'll try to put this in and tell right away I'm not straight. Things are going good now. That would take quite a bit of effort if you were just doing this freehand with a hammer. Got it in. Looks like we had a bit of a casualty on the seal. Started to uh, pull up the edge right here. Hopefully it's going to be okay. These bearings were not in very good condition. So I know I'll be doing this again in the future. But I just wanted to get this sort of working for the time being so I can get this machine moving. So, I guess I'll just put a bit of grease on the lip here, a bit of grease on spindles, and then we'll start tightening this up. Alright, time to put the hubs on. So, I got the uh, seals greased, I got the uh, spindle surface greased. We're going to slide this on. I put the other side on already just to kind of try it out. It takes a little bit of pressure to get it on, and I found that the seal itself provides a, a fair amount of drag. So that's going to be kind of confusing when we set the uh, preload on the bearings. So I'll put the outer bearing in. If it 
wants to. That's in. Washer on, clean up a little bit. Some that on. Is it castle nut or castellated nut? I guess that is the question. I probably could have put a bit more grease on that cone. Outer race, but there's a lot in the middle, so hopefully that's adequate. The way I did it. Yeah, it's starting to go better now. And so I could feel the tension. Of on the bearings right now as it go over. Now we're like completely loose at this point. There's still a fair amount of drag. So this is where I'm kind of at a loss. So they want us to torque it to 1.7 foot pounds and then retorque it next to nothing. So I guess that would be next to nothing. Then with any wheel bearing that you're putting on, you want to make sure that it's seated. So they say, hit it with a dead blow hammer a few times. Make sure that it's on there. Which it is. Then they want us to uh, tighten it where the pin, the cotter pin is lined up so they can go through and then verify that the drag isn't more than 5.8 foot-pounds. So 5.8 foot-pounds, like what would that be? Just a tiny little bit of drag, I guess, is what they want. So it's not a lot of preload, it's just so that there's no slack on the bearings because when you turn the machine the wheels can turn like almost sideways so you don't want the preload wouldn't work very well in that case so that's sort of how I consider this uh, setup to be done correctly I'm actually going to pull these outer bearings out and throw a bit more grease in there I would have liked to have seen a bit of grease on the uh, races before I put them on and then I'm going to put the cotter pins in call it a day and then start putting the wheels on Alright, so I picked up some cotter pins. So these are quarter inch cotter pins. If you get a kit, they'll be called the large cotter pin kit, more than likely. So I just kind of adjusted the nut back and forth. I ended up loosening it a little bit because I didn't want so much preload that it was like crunchy. You can feel the bearings when they're getting really tight. I didn't like that. So uh, they're not going to work right off the hop. You're going to have to kind of crush the end a little bit with a pair of pliers. You wouldn't be able to do this with the stainless steel cotter pins, that's for sure. Like these are pretty big, quarter inch. So that's in pretty far. I think we should be able to get the dust cap over that. And we're going to snip the ends if we can. Goodness. <clears throat> I can't do it. All right, so I'll have to find a way to cut these with bigger things and just side cutters. 
so that I can fold it inwards because it needs to be that way so otherwise it's just going to rub on the uh, dust cap. Alright, so I got it in here. I was able to cut it just with a pair of linesman's pliers. It was easier to cut it on the flat than cutting it on the uh, width. It takes a lot more force to do that. All right, I think we got that in there. Fold it over nice. Time to put on the dust cap without destroying it. Oh, it smokes. That doesn't feel right. <laughs> I guess it's coming off. To get this off very easily. See what's happening. What the heck? Is it rubbing on this thing? Alright, so it was rubbing on the inside of the cap. So I think it'd be rubbing on here, so I'll have to fold that over a bit more. Without preventing it from working. You wouldn't want to lose the wheel on your forklift. All right, there you go. That's the job. So I guess the uh, next step is to put on the wheel. All right, so now I'm just gonna tighten up the lugs with an impact gun. Then put air into the tire. So I'm just gonna tighten this up just by uh, the initial torque of the impact gun. I'll put these, the tire up to 100 PSI, put the unit on the ground and then torque the uh, wheel. Here we're on the home stretch now. So just gonna put this up off the box. Back tires are up to uh, 100 psi now. Now to do the final torque to uh, 100 foot pounds. I always get mixed up when I'm doing this as to which ones I've done. So once I think I've done them all, I just go ahead and go in a circle. There, that one I had missed. Definitely. That's a replacement nut as a different size. And that's it. So hopefully you found that informative. It's not too bad. It's similar to working on a vehicle. Just it doesn't have any brakes, so it's easier actually. So thank you for watching.